During World War II, rain didn't just soak uniforms, it destroyed them. A few days in wet clothes could break a soldier faster than bullets. Hypothermia, trench foot and infection were constant threats, and entire operations failed because of weather. Yet, in the middle of that chaos, a simple innovation changed everything. Waxed cloth. A hand-treated fabric that made men effectively storm-proof. It didn't rustle like modern synthetics, didn't tear easily, and could turn back sleet, snow and driving rain for weeks. This wasn't high technology. It was chemistry, craft and survival. Today, we're uncovering the waxed cloth formula that made soldiers storm-proof, how it worked, and how you can still make and use it today, just like they did on the front lines. How waxed cloth became the soldier's armour against the weather Before waterproof coatings and nylon ponchos, armies relied on natural fibres cotton, linen, canvas and wool. They were durable, but soaked up water like a sponge. In the trenches of the First World War and the muddy campaigns of the Second, that became a deadly problem. The solution came from an unlikely place old sailing traditions. Sailors had long treated their canvas sails and jackets with oil and wax to repel water and military engineers adapted the same principle for soldiers. By the early 1940s, British, American and Commonwealth forces began issuing waxed capes, ground sheets and ponchos, items that could serve as shelter one moment and rain armour the next. These were made by hand or in small field workshops using simple mixtures of wax, oil and heat. The process didn't just waterproof the fabric, it transformed it into a weather-resistant barrier that could survive months of rain, mud and cold without losing flexibility. The magic lay in the formula, one that soldiers could make and reapply themselves in the field using only basic supplies and a bit of patience. Ah, the wartime wax formula, a rather ingenious solution that turned ordinary canvas into storm-proof fabric. You see, while different armies had their own little twists on the recipe, the core idea remained the same. Melt wax into fabric fibres so that water rolls off instead of soaking in. The British Army, for instance, used a blend of paraffin wax and linseed oil for their standard-issue ground sheets and capes. On the other hand, the Americans preferred beeswax mixed with boiled linseed oil or mineral spirits, giving it a smoother, lighter finish. Both versions, though, had to strike a delicate balance. Too much oil and the cloth became sticky, too much wax and it turned stiff in cold weather. Quite the balancing act, really. Now, let's talk about the field-tested blend used by British troops and commandos. It consisted of roughly two parts paraffin wax to one part boiled linseed oil. The materials were melted together over a low heat until they were fully combined, then brushed or rubbed into the cotton canvas. When the mixture cooled, it created this semi-permanent waterproof layer that could flex with the fabric. Soldiers often reheated their treated items over a fire or held them near lamps to bake in the treatment, ensuring it penetrated deeply into the fibres. Quite the clever method, if you ask me. And the result? Well, it was nothing short of astonishing. A properly treated canvas could shed rain for days without absorbing a single drop. It remained breathable enough to prevent sweat build-up, but sealed tightly against wind and moisture. Some troops even went so far as to treat their rucksacks, tents and boots the same way, transforming ordinary gear into all-weather survival tools. Truly remarkable, don't you think?
Wax cloth wasn't a one-time miracle. It needed care. Soldiers learned to reapply the formula whenever the coating wore thin or the fabric started to dull. In the field, they often melted candle wax with cooking oil or animal fat to create a quick fix. This improvised version worked nearly as well and had the added advantage of being scent neutral, which was, you know, crucial for scouts and snipers trying to stay undetected. In wet or cold conditions, maintaining wax gear became a survival skill. Soldiers found that a well-waxed ground sheet could double as a waterproof sleeping bag cover, and when paired with wool blankets, it created a system that kept them warm even in freezing rain. Airborne troops used waxed cloth for lightweight bivouac shelters that could be set up in just a few minutes. In the Pacific, Marines coated their packs and boots to survive the endless monsoon mud. These weren't luxuries, they were lifelines. This adaptability gave the wax cloth its legendary reputation. It was repairable, renewable, and required no factory, just knowledge and effort, really. The same principle is why wax canvas jackets, originally military gear, became a mainstay in post-war outdoor culture. Even today, companies like Barber and Filson trace their roots back to these wartime field treatments. For anyone serious about bushcraft or historical fieldcraft, recreating this formula is entirely possible and practical. You start with a heavy cotton canvas, denim or duck cloth. The tighter the weave, the better. In a heat-safe container, melt two parts paraffin wax or beeswax if you're going for a natural option, with one part boiled linseed oil or mineral spirits over gentle heat. Stir until it's fully combined. Using a stiff brush or cloth, apply the mixture evenly to your fabric while it's warm. Pay special attention to seams and edges where water tends to collect. Once the fabric is coated, gently heat it, either with a hair dryer near a campfire but not too close, or in the sun, to help the wax absorb into the fibres. Let it cure overnight. The surface should feel dry and slightly waxy, but not sticky. For field reapplication, rub bar wax directly on the fabric and warm it with your hands or a small heat source. The result will be a weather-resistant piece of gear that can outperform many modern synthetics. Bushcrafters often use this technique on tarps, bedrolls or jackets because it adds longevity, breathability and historical authenticity. If you want to go a step further, you can modify the formula based on temperature. For cold climates, use more oil for flexibility. For tropical rain, increase wax content for maximum waterproofing. These small tweaks mirror what soldiers did depending on where they were stationed, from Arctic operations to the jungles of Burma. The waxed cloth formula was more than just a clever field hack. It really represented the ingenuity and resilience of soldiers who had to, you know, outsmart nature with only limited tools. It turned vulnerable fabric into weather armour and allowed troops to fight, sleep and survive in conditions that would cripple forces who were less well equipped. For historians, it's honestly a perfect example of wartime adaptation where traditional craftsmanship met industrial warfare. And for survivalists, it's proof that durable, reliable gear doesn't have to rely on synthetics or expensive equipment. All you need are the right materials and the knowledge to use them. 
This formula continues to live on not just in reenactments or museums, but in the outdoor community, where waxed canvas remains a symbol of rugged, practical design. Whether you're restoring old military gear, preparing your own bushcraft kit, or studying the ingenuity of wartime logistics, this small piece of forgotten chemistry still stands as one of World War II's most useful legacies. If you found this deep dive into the stormproof wax cloth formula insightful, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning, where we uncover the forgotten skills, materials and fieldcraft innovations that shaped the modern world. Share this video with a fellow history or bushcraft enthusiast and keep the legacy of real wartime ingenuity alive. One story, one skill and one formula at a time.